When they discovered that I have cancer, the devil came attacking. I could hear his voice saying, what makes you think you have eternal life? Evangelist Luis Palau. I remember feeling like Jesus said, people are going to say, Lord, Lord. And the Lord said, depart from me, I don't know you. Satan said to me, you're one of those. You don't know the Lord. You're just telling other people about it. Wow, it was a real shakeup. Could it be that on my worst day, how you love me still will not change? What if it's really not about what I do, but what you did? Oh, what if this seems for When Luis Palau was diagnosed with terminal cancer, his faith in Christ was put to the test. Luis is going to share more about that and more about his life as a world-traveling evangelist on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. After Luis talks about spending his life telling others about Jesus, you'll hear from Billy Graham on the importance of sharing your faith. We are to go to the whole world, not just to our own community or our own nation, but to all the world because the whole world needs to be saved. If you want to know more about what it means to be saved, pay a visit to our website. It's findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. And if you want to get in touch with us here at GPS, send us an email. Our address is gps at billygram.net. We recently heard from Abby. She told us that she feels encouraged in her walk with Jesus every week after listening to GPS. We are so glad to hear that, Abby. Thanks for letting us know. Again, the address is gps at billygram.org. GPS. God. People. Stories. I was born in South America. The southernmost country in South America is Argentina. And I was born in, uh, in the capital city. That city is Buenos Aires, and the year was 1934. Now, Luis's parents attended church, but they didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ until shortly before Luis was born. And that's when a traveling Christian missionary led them to Jesus. When Luis was 10, his dad died unexpectedly. The way his father lived out his faith in his final days had a huge impact on Luis. Because my dad knew he was dying the fever was eating him up. He was yellow as could be. The doctor said, go home. There's nothing I can do for you. It was bronchopneumonia in the days when there was no penicillin or anything else. And uh, my dad began, sat up in bed and began to sing a song and clap his hands, you know. And he sang about heaven three times. Then exhausted from the galloping fever, his head fell on the pillow. He pointed up to heaven And he quoted St. Paul in Philippians 1, I'm going to be with Jesus, which is better by far. And a few moments later, my dad went to be with the Lord. Two years after his dad's death, Luis became a follower of Jesus with the help of a summer camp counselor. The counselor did a good job on me. He used Romans 10, 9 and 10, you know, if you confess with your lips, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised them from the dead, you shall be saved. And to me, I had the assurance of eternal life from that night out in the mountains of southern Argentina. Uh, I know I have eternal life. As he entered his teenage years, Luis began to feel God giving him wisdom about what he should and shouldn't do with his life. We have what they call carnival over there, which is be- before Easter and Holy Week. And in, the, in our Latin countries, there's a lot of stuff goes on, like in New Orleans, you know, where the partying and the drugs and the drinking and everything is enormous. And I thought, I can't engage in this. I was 17, and I said to the Lord, Lord, get me out of this. I don't want anything to do with it. I want to please you. I don't want any garbage of the world. I just want to serve you. A few years later, Luis moved from Buenos Aires to the city of Cordoba and began working at a bank. It was in Cordoba that Luis met a pastor from California named Ray Stedman. Ray and his colleagues had traveled down to Argentina to show a film of a fiery young American preacher by the name of Billy Graham. Now, Luis had heard Billy Graham preaching on the radio years before. Luis had even prayed and asked God to make him an evangelist someday, an evangelist just like Mr. Graham. 
So after the film was over, Luis decided to share that prayer request with Ray. And Mr. Stedman said, you know, have you ever thought about coming to the States? And I said, yeah, but I got to work and help my mom and my five sisters. You know, we have financial needs and so on. So maybe someday I'll come. And he said to me, well, I'll see you in the States. And I said, well, God willing, maybe someday I will. He said, no, God is going to will. I'll see you in the USA. What Luis didn't know was that Ray was going to go back to California and raise enough money to help Luis come to the U.S. and go to seminary. Soon, Luis found himself in Portland, Oregon. Ray wanted me to go to a four-year seminary, Dallas Seminary. And I said, wow, four years, that's too long. <laughs> too many people are going to die and go to hell while I'm sitting there studying for four years. I'll go to a place where they have a one-year grad course. And they had this grad course at Multnomah University. And I came here, came to Oregon. I met my wife there, which was a nice bonus. And we've been married a long time now, 58 years. In 1962, the year after Luis married his wife, Pat, he met Billy Graham. In fact, Luis served as a Spanish interpreter for Mr. Graham's crusade in Fresno, California. And it was a great experience. I learned everything I could from the BG team and how to organize festivals, campaigns. And when I interpreted for Dr. Graham, he had a luncheon or a breakfast for the team. And they invited me to go. I didn't plan it this way, but I'm glad it worked. I was seated right next to Mr. Graham across the head table of the breakfast. And Mr. Graham asked me, well, who are you, you know? And I told him my name. And he said, what are, what are you here for? And I said, I'm going to interpret for you into Spanish. And he said, what do you want to do in the future? And I told him, I want to have campaigns in big cities just like you do. And so he gave me a bunch of advice, Mr. Graham did. And for some reason, he got to like me and love me. And he was my friend for the rest of his days until the Lord took him home a year and a half ago. When Luis began his ministry work, he obviously had no idea how much the Lord was going to bless his dream of being an evangelist. In 1966, just a few years after meeting Billy Graham, Luis held his first large-scale outreach in South America with an audience of 20,000 people. And so from then on, we began to have campaigns, campaigns, campaigns all over the place. Uh, small ones, big ones, any door that opened, we just did it, took advantage of every opportunity. But as the years went on, the Lord opened unusual doors, which I could never explain. I think it was just the Holy Spirit doing it. To date, Luis Palau has shared the gospel with 30 million people in 75 countries across the world, from England to China, from the Soviet Union to the United States. Luis has spent the better part of the last five decades telling people about Jesus in person, through TV, radio, Internet, and in writing. And so it's been a, a wonderful life. Now I'm an old grandpa. I've got cancer in my left lung, and the doctor said I'd be home in heaven last Christmas, but here it is. I'm still around. <laughs> so the Lord wants me on planet Earth for a little more time. And I can't have crusades anymore or festivals because my body is not responding. But I do have radio every day in Spanish and English, several 6,000 radio stations and do television interviews and try and bless God's people. Luis says dealing with cancer has been one of the most difficult things he's ever had to do, not just from a physical standpoint, but spiritually as well. When they discovered that I have cancer, the devil came attacking. I could hear his voice saying, what makes you think you have eternal life? Well, I know the stuff you did when you were young. I know what you think. You don't have eternal life. You just preach to other people. I remember feeling like Jesus said, people are going to say, Lord, Lord. And the Lord said, depart from me. I don't know you. And, and Satan said to me, you're one of those. You don't know the Lord. You're just telling other people about him. Wow. It was a real shakeup. I never doubted my salvation in 80 years. But nevertheless, at the end, Satan comes and attacks you. So we need to be ready for that. He is the liar and the father of lies, as Jesus said. The only way Luis has been able to resist the devil's lies is through the truth found in the Bible, especially the book of Hebrews and especially chapters 8 through 10. It mentions seven times the phrase, once for all, once for all, once for all, that the death of Christ was so perfect that that one sacrifice took away sin forever. 
The second thing that comes out in chapter 9 and 10 is that Jesus Christ is our attorney, our intercessor in the presence of God the Father, and that he intercedes for us, and that we uh, we know he's interceding for us. Therefore, though Satan may attack you, you know that we are safe in the arms of Jesus Christ, and he stands for us, protects us, guards us, and our conscience is clear, not because we are good, but because we are forgiven, because it's very important. When you uh, realize that Uh, Death is staring you in the face. It's just absolutely wonderful to know. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hands. Uh, John 10, 28, you know. And that came home to me with absolute force. I have eternal life. I know I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. I'm a child of God. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to the place which he prepared for me. As Luis Palau looks back on his life and his ministry, he's quick to point out two things. One, you don't have to be a full-time evangelist to share your faith with others. And two, it's not by our own strength that we live the Christian life. The risen Lord Jesus Christ lives in you. Christ lives in me. He lives in you. He really does. And he is the power that you need to be fruitful to lead others to Jesus, to overcome temptation, not to perfection, unfortunately, till we get to heaven. But he lives in you, and all his power is your power. All his wisdom is your wisdom. All his energy is your energy. And you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a truck driver, but at the same time, you're proclaiming the good news just like anybody else. You don't have to be a crusade evangelist to proclaim the good news. You can do it over a cup of coffee, uh, driving with a guy on a truck, everywhere. Yeah. Maybe you're feeling a call on your life like Luis Palau to proclaim the good news of Jesus to people around the world. Or maybe you're not sure where you stand with this Jesus that Luis keeps talking about. Either way, we are here to help you. If you'd like to learn more, go to our website. It's findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Luis's mom helped jumpstart his ministry. And you're going to hear him explain what that looked like in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Whether people live in South America, India, Africa, or Europe, they need Jesus Christ. No matter what their other religious beliefs may be, they need Jesus Christ if they're to be redeemed. Billy Graham. We believe we're obeying the last command of our Lord when he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said that we are to go to the whole world, not just to our own community or our own nation, but to all the world because the whole world needs to be saved. Jesus Christ himself was evangelistic in that he turned his back on the ivory palaces of glory to come to this earth to die for man's redemption. His whole life was spent in spreading the gospel, in making God known to the sons of men. He was an itinerant preacher, going from one part of the Middle East to the other, never sparing himself to do so. It has now been my privilege to preach the gospel on every continent, and we shall continue going throughout the world, proclaiming Jesus Christ and Him crucified as long as God gives us breath. That's a powerful word there from Billy Graham. He broadcast that message on the radio in 1962, right before going on an evangelistic tour through South America, where our guest on this episode of GPS is from. Our guest is Luis Palau, and he says that while he was still living in South America in his early 20s, his mom told him something that changed him forever. At the time, Luis was a street preacher. His mom suggested that he go to a different city to try preaching there. But Luis was a little bit hesitant. He told his mom that he would wait until he clearly heard God call him to go there. And she said, the call, the call, she said, the call went out 2,000 years ago. God is waiting for the answer, not the call. 
<laughs> and the boy, that shook me up. It was very good, you know. Uh, I suddenly realized, no, yeah, I'm not waiting for the call. I just have to obey the call that the Lord made when he said the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, you know. The Lord sent out the call 2,000 years ago. It's our duty to just obey and do what he told us to do, go and proclaim the gospel to all creation. Anybody who believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. And we are certainly grateful that Luis Palau answered that call and that he took the time to share about his life with us. Thank you, too, for listening. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Remember, you can email us anytime by writing to gps at billygram.org. That's gps at billygram.org. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. I'm alive. It's not in my heart.